Michael Page, MVP. We'll get the question started with Jay Anderson. Your line is live. MVP, welcome back. Uh, you know, I want to ask, first of all, I've asked a couple of fighters this. What is it like getting to take part in a bit of history Saturday with the first MMA card in France? Yeah, it's great. Um, obviously, it just makes it, it makes it more of, that much more of an occasion. Uh, you know, coming back after all this uh, COVID-19 madness that's, uh, that's still ongoing right now, um, you know, having the sports back is a... Uh, is, is a, is a great thing so that's that's already feels like a bit of an occasion um and then to add uh, it being uh, just a historic event just because it's the first time france has actually opened the door to mma just uh gets me that much more excited so yeah, I'm, I'm i'm happy does the fans being back play a role as well i know there's not going to be a, a full house or anything because of the restrictions but it's one of the rare occasions recently where we're going to see fans in the building yeah no again um i, I think it's a shame that it's, uh, it had dropped down to, I believe it's like a thousand people now. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, but it's a shame that it couldn't, because it is such a historical uh, event that's about to take place. It's a shame that we, did, we, we couldn't get, uh, you know, a full house in there. It would have been great. Um, but it's definitely a reason to, to come back to France and, uh, and put on a show later on when everything's kind of back to normal. Now, you've got Ross Houston here, undefeated, Cage Warriors champion. Uh, he is a tough test. And then if you hear some of the, the commentary online or from certain areas of the fan base, you know, they label him as a can or just a guy that you're going to crush. Does that frustrate you? Because it really does take away from, you know, what you have to do this weekend. And he is a quality opponent. Yeah, you know, what? It's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a... Um an unfortunate side effect to my style. Uh, and I've said this from a long time ago, because if I, you know, if I beat all the exact same people that I have, I've beaten so far, but in a very different, more generic style, where it's a bit more of a back and forward, you know, I get hit a couple of times and, you know, I get rocked and I come back and uh, people would just lay with me, oh yeah, this guy's a great fighter, he's tough. And um, I wouldn't have that, that kind of, oh, or he's fighting cans appeal, but because of my style, I make really good opponents look very mediocre, um, which is great entertainment wise. Uh, it's great for me as a fighter because I'm able to keep really safe uh, and, and still be devastating. But that's the like I said, there's a side effect to that where people just don't um, believe in the, the opponents that I have uh, unless they're you know really high, you know, level named uh, opponents. Uh, I'm, I'm talking from the, my first ever MMA fight. I was, people were trying to match me up against Anderson Silva and GSP and like people like that and, and immediately. And I'd barely, I've barely done, uh, what, six months of jujitsu. So that just shows you, uh, like I said, the effect of my style. Donut? Michael, I have, I have three quick ones, if you don't mind. The first one is where does Ross Houston rank? You know, obviously he's the toughest opponent you've faced since the Douglas Lima fight. Uh, but where does he rank in your overall career of, 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 of tough fights for you? I mean, he's obviously not Douglas Lima, but he's, he's, is he in the, the Paul Daly range? Again, I couldn't tell you. Um, until I'm, I know a lot of people have asked these kind of questions before and before I've actually stepped in a, a cage with somebody. Uh, I might go in there and it'd be the, one of the toughest fights I've ever had. Um, I might go in there and it'd just be typical uh, day in the park with MVP. So um, uh, I'll tell you as, as soon as I finish, you can ask that. You can ask that question again. Obviously, people like like the last question said. People call you a can crusher. I mean, uh, there are certain people who maybe you've made look like cans. You know, Richard Carley's no can, but he's you know you made oh, you no, made it look that way. He, he definitely is a can. <laughs> but uh, you know. Do you do you think now with this with the COVID regulations with the fact that you're not going to be performing in front of crowds? I know that what you did towards the end of last year, you did three different markets in three months. You did Dublin, you did Japan, you did London. Do you think now without that appeal being there, you're only going to be asking for the the really the, the top guys from from here on in? Yeah, now to be fair, I, 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 if it wasn't, I don't even believe I'd be matched up with Ross Tusa if it wasn't for the the situation I was actually in at the moment. Um, I'm unable to get to the States. So a lot of the American fighters aren't able to come over here. Um, so, which is why we have to find, uh, you know, credible opponents 
in Europe. And he definitely is a credible opponent. Like again, he's achieved something I haven't achieved in a world title within MMA. So, um, you know, I have to give him his his, his dues. And he uh, he's also undefeated. Uh, you know, I got I got to change that. But it's it's a, it's a hard thing to change when somebody's just used to winning um, all the time. So, yeah, it's it's, it's a tough fight. Um, and I just look forward to the challenge. Michael, we're, we're going to get uh, Ryan Scope on again. And, and I know that his fight was a big deal. Your fight was also a big deal the last time you were here in Ireland. Uh, could you, with, if we're, coming up to, we're just past the year anniversary of that uh, incredible night at the Free Arena. Can you kind of, you know, can, can you have a word on, on looking back on that great night, the build up? You obviously had a, a very heated build up to your fight that evening. And, uh, and kind of tell us your, your, your best memories of, of the, the time you fought in Dublin. Oh man, just just the whole, just that whole that that whole week of being out there um, was amazing. Uh, stepping into the arena and hearing, I, I I love I love supporters that really do support, you know. Um, and one thing I liked about the Irish fans is they support their own, and that's I think that's important to them, and they're passionate about their country, which is again I love to see, which I don't get to see as much in the UK. Um, and um, sorry, in, in London, and you know, see, see, just people don't get behind each other like that in the same way. Um, and just hearing that noise, but at the same time, they are also martial arts fans as well, so they appreciate a good fight, they appreciate talent. Um, and the comments that I got, you know, so I was out speaking to fans uh, before and afterwards, and it was just, it was just great. They they truly do love um, watching the sport, and it's it's nice for the effort that we put in to kind of receive genuine praise um, afterwards. Um, so it's, it's great. It was an epic time there. We've got Ben followed by Andrew. Hi, uh, Mike. Um, I'm going to merge my two questions into one. Um, so you were on a three-fight winning streak following your title shot against Douglas Lima. And I assume after making it four, you're going to be gunning for that, um, for that rematch there. But obviously Lima is moving up to a uh, challenge for that middleweight belt. Would you be willing to uh, take another fight in the interim, depending on how his situation plays out? And uh, also, how do you actually see Lima versus Masati going down? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, that fight is the, the fight that I want. I'm more interested in that fight than anything else. If, uh, you know, Lima was to decide to stay in middleweight, then I'm, I'm going to meet him in middleweight. If he was to move up to light heavy heavyweight, then I'll meet him there. Either way, I want that fight. Um, and with regards to his fight, up and coming fight, again, everyone knows that I have massive respect for uh, Lima, um, even bigger respect, I think, for Masasi, because I just think he's one of the, one of the greatest in our sport. That's um, uh, just kind of massively underrated or should be you know, a, a lot more highly praised. Um, I actually went to spar him in preparation for Douglas Lima. And the reason is I actually think he's a bigger version of uh, Douglas Lima. Um, and uh, the only the only main difference there is I think his jujitsu is way superior. We've seen that in how he dealt with uh, Rory McDonald, and I think that's going to be the real difference maker in this fight. Um, if it goes to the ground, Douglas Sima will drown, in my opinion. Um, but I, I think it's a great fight to 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 make. It was a great fight, a great idea, um, very ambitious of of Douglas Sima. The fact that they've actually sparred already and, you know, he actually says it didn't go his way um, is, is even more ambitious for him to want to step in and do that in public. So, um, again, like he's, a, he's, an, a, he's an amazing athlete, got a great mindset. And I'm just going to be a fan on the, on the side, just waiting to see the result. But either way, I want him afterwards. Andrew? Hello, mate. Yeah, kind of carrying on from that. Um... As a competitor, it was kind of business as usual for you. You got three wins on the bounce after losing to Lima. So how important is it just to get that O back, to get back the person who defeated you before? How significant is that for you to, to get Lima? You know, what? It's, it, it's very significant, but not because I lost, not just because I lost the fight. Now, if it was a, you know, a close back and forth uh, and I lost or I got completely dominated and I just lost that fight. I probably wouldn't be that eager to get back. I know to myself that I have to, there's a lot of work that I need to do to kind of get back to that level. What is more frustrating and why I want to get that back is because I felt like I was in control of that fight. I felt like I almost gave that fight to him, being over eager, um, being uh, a bit too overconfident in a, in, a, in a small moment and forgetting that at that 
level, those small mistakes are, are devastating mistakes that are, are massively detrimental, as everybody saw. Um, and I think that's what's more frustrating. You know, I had him rocked. Uh, and I actually said that. I can't remember what interview I saw or who I was talking to, but I said it's going to end in the second round. Either he's going to be on the floor or I'm going to be on the floor. That's exactly how I said it. And that's exactly how it went down. Um, I just feel like it should have been the other way around. But it was, it was on its way to heading in that direction. Uh, and I made a few stupid mistakes that just um, should never, never happen. Uh, and that's the reason why I'm chasing, because I feel like I know what should have happened. Um, and it's, it's more frustrating when you feel like you gave something away versus actually just losing. Does this feel like a special night for British MMA? Of course, uh, you know, the first one in Paris, France, but the BBC thing feels massive. And you got one of the biggest stars in British MMA and a guy who's much beloved back on the British scene as well. So does it feel like a piece of history for, for British MMA? Yeah, 100%. I think we're, yeah, uh, Bellator have been amazing with regards to getting out to the European audience. Um, people are really starting to know who Bellator is, know the organization of Bellator. And this is, you know, re-educating people that think UFC is MMA, um, which is great. So people are like, you know, really are starting to acknowledge uh, uh, different organizations and actually understand what's, what, the, you know, our situation is. Um, and having BBC on board is just, that, that's going to make it, you know, we're going to go out to more, way more people. And you know how I feel about that. The more eyes are on me, the more I want to act out, shall I say, but in a, in a very entertaining way. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to, to this night. It's, it's, it's definitely going to be history for, for the UK and, and for France. All right, we'll go to Lenny. Uh, take two more questions. How's it going, MVP? Good, good. How's it going? Yeah, so how what's it been like leading up to the fight in the COVID situation? How's it been like in training? Has that kind of affected you in any way? Fortunately, um, London Shoot Fighters, uh, we were classed as an elitist gym very early on, um, which meant anybody that is a professional fighter was able to continue training. We had a load of different things that we had to adhere to, COVID, you know, practices, shall I say, that we had to adhere to. Um, but either way, that definitely kept me sane. I wasn't cooped up in my house like a lot of other people. So I was fortunate to be able to travel to training and the roads were empty. So it was nice. Uh, uh, get to train and train every day and still kind of keep that momentum going. Uh, and like I said, just keep it, it helped. It definitely helps with the, the, the mental aspect of things. Um, uh, during that time so uh, and what what also was a great thing is where there's a lot of other gyms that with professional fighters uh, that didn't have gyms accessible to them they were now coming to, to our gym so we had to we ended up with so many new bodies at our gym working with so many new bodies uh, a lot of people are very scared of our gym just because <laughs> we've got a, got a bit of a reputation about how how, how hard we spar and how tough it is there. And it is, it is definitely tough there, but people were then forced to come just because they had no other options. Um, and it, it was great, definitely uh, a good time for our training. Yeah, so we'll talk about the fight this weekend against Ross Houston. Do you feel like, what are you gonna expect from Ross Houston that night? I, I don't really expect, expect anything other than him being a, a, you know, a tough MMA fighter. And, you know, he's gonna go for, he's gonna wanna go for, go for the win. It's, uh, it's a it's a lottery night for anybody that fights me because um, they'll they'll make a name for themselves immediately. So um, he's going to be a tough MMA fighter. I've been a, I've come across a load of them, um, and I'm going to be me. And <laughs> a lot of the time, being me works. So uh, that's what I'm going to focus on. Okay, we'll take two more. Santiago followed by Michael Morgan. Hi, Michael. Greetings from Amsterdam. Do you yeah. still want to do boxing matches or is your focus only on MMA? My, my focus at the moment is MMA, but I definitely uh, I'm, not, I'm not stopping with the boxing. I think I, I, think I just like uh, interrupting things over there because uh, I kind of get, get the feeling they don't, they, they don't like people coming in from the outside uh, and, causing, you know, and just causing a bit of an uproar, uh, especially with the kind of style that I have. There's a lot of boxing pugilists that just can't stand that kind of style full stop. And, and it's even worse when it doesn't come straight from boxing. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely not gonna stop doing the boxing. They don't like that, man. I love that style. Well, last thing for me, Michael, <laughs> that was looking to come to Amsterdam next year. Would you like to fight in a country like Holland where the people adore beautiful striking like yours? 
exactly it's the same thing I said about the um, the Irish fans um, in Amsterdam. It's exactly the same. They are they are pure. They love martial arts. They love combat. Um, and we I go over there quite a lot. I've got a lot of friends over there. Uh, I used to go back and forward almost just every year. I used to go like three or four, five times just to go and see friends over there. And you know, uh, I've seen I've seen how they are over there with regards to the martial arts. So it's, it's yeah, Amsterdam is definitely a place I like to to perform in. Right, Michael. Michael, um, in previous videos and interviews we've conducted with you, you've given us um, some highlights and, uh, well, viral moments, one of which you predicted very precisely how the cyborg fight would go down to a T. I mean, how does this fight actually go down to a T? Um, I'm going to be very honest. I haven't yeah. watched Ross Houston yet in terms of any of his fights. Uh, I will do in the, over the next couple of days. I'll have a little watch. Um, but I haven't watched him enough to kind of answer that question to the, in the way I want. But I'm, for now, I'm more focused on how good I'm feeling, how good I have been feeling in the gym. And some of the stuff that I've been pulling out in the gym is, is insane. So if, if I pull out even a 5% of that, it's going to be a rough night for, for Houston. So um, I'm just focusing on making sure I can deliver exactly that. There's a couple of special moves I would like to land. Here we go. Uh, he's a, quite a, a, a tight ship. He seems very composed. Um, but I, I, I tend to break that break that down uh, quite well and, and bring that emotion out of you. So um, I'm sure I'll do the same. Just a couple more from me. The um, Well, the prevalence of Black Lives Matter at the moment is obviously doing it a worldwide uh, trip. And I noticed that you were actually present at uh, at least one of the marches. You know, a, a lot of people are, I suppose, divided on Black Lives Matter now because of, well, I suppose the bad press that they're getting in terms of things which are slowly being uncovered. Where are you um, today as we stand on Black Lives Matter? Uh, I'm doing a lot of work um, with uh, to take the initiative, uh, taking the initiative party, which is a party uh, full of different company owners uh, within the black community, within the Muslim community, um, getting together. So I'm doing a lot of work in the background um, just to try and help these things. So sometimes it can, it, you know, uh, when you're trying to push for something and you're so, that you're so passionate about, it can come across uh, a, bit, a bit harsher. It can come across, you know, people can you know, receive it in the wrong way. Um, and I think that is what is happening in a lot of different ways. Um, it's hard when a lot of people are getting their information from just social media. Um, and so it's, it's, it's not really the full, the full picture. So I like, you know, we're doing a lot of work with different prominent uh, figures in the black community to, to try and rectify things while we've got everyone's attention at the moment. So uh, that's my stance on that for, for now. But you, you will slowly see more things with regards to what I've, you know, what I've been doing. Uh, come out slowly. Incredible. Final one for me. Our old friend Paul Daly was talking uh, recently uh, to me about um, seeing you in his future. I mean, you're talking quite a lot about, you know, getting back obviously into title contention, but is Paul Daly in your future or is that something which, you know, you've done, dusted and you won the fight fairly um, and you don't want to revisit? What's your take? Uh, no, he's a person. Uh, he's got a face that you always just want to punch. So, uh, I'd definitely be happy to, to jump back in the cage with him, but it's, it, does, it seems that seems more it's more just the emotional side of me talking. I don't think it benefits me in any way um, doing it. Um, but maybe you know we can organise something. Let's say if he says he's retiring, maybe we can organise something in the future, in the far future, that you know we can uh, just line our own pockets and uh, just uh, do something, just me and him, and organise our own and organise our own event. Um, but yeah, for now, it's not something that I, I care too much about. Like I said, the main person I'm, only, I'm focusing on is the Douglas Lima fight. All right, that wraps it up. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, thank you, guys. We will be joined shortly by Ryan Stokes.